Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I'm going to try to wrap up our teaching that we're in, our little mini-series about sowing a seed of money into ministries. And with that, these teachings I've done, I've also incorporated talking about how unbiblical it is for people to be paying a monetary tithe money one-tenth of their paychecks to a church system to pay church bills, bills that were created by a small group of people and have put the burden of paying those bills to pay the bank, salaries, and all this expense overhead on God's everyday people. And they're saying, even if you can't pay your own bills, you need to pay the bills that we created. Guys, you know what? I know there's a lot of people that disagree with all of, me, all of what I'm teaching right now. But honestly, if you take an honest look at Scripture, Jesus did not teach the tithe. The New Testament writers did not teach it or write about it, and nor did the apostles. Because the basic truth of it all is God never set in place for us to go out and buy expensive pieces of land, build expensive buildings to call people in so that they can be at their own small little group of people and separate themselves from the world. The New Testament church met in homes that cost them nothing to meet and be in fellowship together. And they were in small groups, lived around each other like they were family, and they grew spiritually in that small group, okay? So, uh, and everybody can just disagree if you want to. I'm okay with that. You know what? I am a Bible studier. I study the Word. I study words in the Word, if you want to call it that. And I just am called to teach biblical truth and not men's traditions. So you'll have to forgive me if I offend people, but I am going to teach what Holy Spirit teaches me, okay? So I do not know that I will finish this today, but I am wrapping it up. I, I want to first, I want today, I'm going to talk to you about two scriptures, and I may just go ahead and do one more teaching tomorrow, then wrap this up and we'll move on, okay? Uh, our little mini-series is Sowing Seed into Ministries, and most of this is TV evangelists uh, or even people who are at uh, conventions and different places where it's not in a church, but they're having some type of religious meeting, okay? I hear these uh, snatch of verse people who are very slick at using these verses that are pulled out of context so that they can pickpocket God's beloved ones, which would be you, so that they can get the money that they need to live lavish, extravagant lifestyles. And that is absolutely unbiblical, okay? Uh, today, let me start in Second Peter chapter 2, and I want to talk to you about verses 1 through 3. I'm going to start here by reading the message translation because I think he just hits it point blank and doesn't mince words here. And it says, but there were also lying prophets among the people then, just as there will be lying religious teachers among you. That's as straightforward as it can get. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible as well. But also in those days, there rose false prophets among the people. Just as there will be false teachers among yourselves who will subtly and stealthily introduce heretical doctrines and destructive heresies. Now listen. Destructive heresies is telling someone to take their house note, their rent money, their grocery money, and don't feed your children, but you pay your tithe that you owe to the church before you do anything else. That is a destructive heresy. It hurts people, and it's a lie. There it is, right there. I didn't even write this. I just get the to read it to you, okay? Uh, heretical doctrines also is covered in this sow a seed of your money in my ministry, and uh, it's like rubbing the, uh, the genie, and poof, here comes a hundred times what you paid. 
to me to grow my ministry so I can buy expensive cars and build more buildings and wear expensive suits and all of that. Did you know none of this even mirrors what the New Testament apostles and disciples, what they lived. These men laid down their lives and lived hard, homeless, penniless, went hungry in everything to get the Word of God spread out. But let me keep going. I want to read to you now uh, in verse 3 what the expanded Bible says here. Watch this. It says, Many will follow their evil, depraved ways. Many people will. And say evil things and slander the way of truth. Those false teachers only want your money. And in their greed, they will use you, they will exploit you by telling you lies with deceptive and false words. Now, that's in the expanded Bible, okay? Uh, let's see uh, what it says here in the uh, message. It says, they will give the way of truth a bad name. And yes, they do. The outside world sees these TV evangelists, rip-off artists, giving the truth and God a bad name. They are only out for themselves. They'll say anything that sounds good to exploit you. There it is right there. You can't get any more simplistically explaining that there will be people coming in among God's people saying things, twisting scriptures to get your money. And it's not only going to hurt God's people, but it's going to give the outside world and the inside church people that go to church, believers, a bad understanding about God. It's right here in 2 Peter. And uh, that's 2 Peter verses, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3 is what I just got through teaching. Now, for the next thing I want to talk about, and this is a question that someone asked, so I'm going to talk about this next as well. Uh, like I said, I'll probably do one more teaching tomorrow, and then I'm going to move on into some other things that I've been asked to teach. But I want to go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And this is the golden rule, okay, of giving in the New Testament. There's no such thing as tithing and sowing seed money into ministries. Right here, Paul is very clear on what we're supposed to do when we give. Let each man give according as he has determined in his own heart. That's it. And this says at the last part of this, not grudgingly, not under compulsion, not being forced. Now here's the part somebody asked. For God loves a cheerful giver. Their question was, is does God love some people more than others if they give more money than other people? Because that's how this is taught in a lot of different meetings where they're trying to teach you to be cheerful givers so God will love you more. Because God don't love people that don't give money. But if you give money, especially to the TV evangelist or the guy up on the stage, God's going to love you more. And they've got a good point there because I've heard it man, uh, manipulated to make it sound that way as well. So here's a couple of questions I want to ask. Is this verse really saying that God does not love everyone? The answer to that is no. That's not what this verse is saying. Is God's love conditional and something that we barter for in exchange for our hard-earned money? And the answer to that is no, God is not loving people conditionally according to what they give. Okay, I want to read to you what this verse is actually really saying. I want to pull some verses because it's really hard because the way that these are translated sometimes, we don't get the full understanding. I'm just going to read it in the Passion Translation. Let giving flow from your heart, not from a sense of religious duty. That would cover the tithe, by the way. Not from religious duty. You owe us this to pay our bills. Let it spring up freely from the joy of giving the joy of giving. Now watch this. Because God loves hilarious generosity. So it's not that God is loving people. He loves the act of generous giving is what this verse is actually really saying, okay? 
I want to read it a little bit in the message. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Now see how much more sense that makes. Okay. Uh, the Amplified Classic says, God takes pleasure in a cheerful giver whose heart is in the giving. See, God does not love more people more. It's not like you've got money and God's got love, and if you give your money, God's going to give you more love. No. It's like a good, loving father watching two kids playing, okay? One of them has candy, and the other doesn't have candy, okay? And the one that has the candy says, here, have some of this. I want you to enjoy some of my candy, and the father is sitting in the background watching his little boy going, that's my kid. He loves that other person. He takes joy in giving away some of the things he has because he loves that other kid. Did you know right here in context, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 is not talking only or exclusively about money. This scripture is actually talking about sharing what you have with other people who do not have. Whether it may be money, it does not have to be money. It can be your time, it can be food, it can be helping them some way, like helping them get to town because they don't have a car. There's a lot more to do with giving. See, in our American churches, we think giving is about money. Writing a check, putting it on a credit card. And we take a monetary approach to Scripture when it was written. That is not the approach the writers were taking, okay? I want you to think about that from now on. When you're reading something that's been taught to you that this means money, I want you to pray about that and then read it in context and say, Holy Spirit, show me. Is this really talking about money or is this talking about anything that I could possibly give to show other people how much I love them. I'm going to sign off, but I'm going to leave you with this thought. Do you realize that my father is so pleased when he sees me give away hugs to hurting people because he loved to see my heart of giving away affection to people who are hurting and need that love and need that hug? And what about the $1 one little old dollar that I give away to some kid at the Dollar Tree to buy him some little toy. Did you know my father takes more pleasure in me giving that generosity, hilarious generosity is what that is, to some little kid that knows he was special to somebody that day. And my father is going, that right there is hilarious giving. And he delights in me giving like that. I want you to pray about that, guys, okay? Listen, I'm going to sign off. As you already know, I always tell you this, but it's never too many times, is it? I love each and every one of you, and I want only the very, very best that my Father has in store for you. I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.